What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about one of the ways that you can create a retaining wall in terrain in SketchUp. And before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to give people a start to finish kind of training in SketchUp so you can walk into the course not knowing anything and walk out um, being completely proficient in the software. I'm going to cover everything from the basic tools to um, things like uh, an introduction to photorealistic rendering, some advanced modeling concepts, um, some site modeling stuff, that kind of thing. So if that's something you're interested in, that course is going to be 40% off through the 28th of February, after which the price will be going up. So if you're interested in that, make sure you check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're going to start off and we're going to use the sandbox tools to create a kind of a terrain. So you can get your terrain from wherever you want. You may get it from contours. You may get it from a, a bunch of different places. We're just going to create an example terrain real quick. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the sandbox tools, click on from scratch. I'm going to set my grid spacing to two feet. And then I'm going to click on my origin, give it a length of 100 feet along the green axis and 100 feet along the red axis. That ought to make it big enough for us to come in here and uh, make some changes and uh, get kind of an idea of the way that this would work. All right, so I will note um, as I come in here and I work on this, and I'm going to go ahead and reverse these faces so the white face is facing up. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, so this is not the only way to do this, but it may be a way that you find helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the smooth tool, and I'm just going to give it a radius of like 30 feet. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create some hills real quick just to give us kind of a general topography um, just something that we have to work with like I said you can get these from anywhere um, you know you may get yours from uh, you may get yours from actual contours or something like that but you just need a terrain and so when you're working with terrain first of all it's a good idea to save your model often so it's a good idea to save your model often just because a lot of the time what ends up happening is you're dealing with a bunch of different geometry and uh, it's just better to save before you do start doing some of these more complex um, functions. And so what we're going to do in this case is let's say that we need to create kind of a flat pad on the back side of this hill over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're just going to draw kind of where our pad would be. And so one way to do that is if you want to, you can just go to a top down view. So you can go to your views and click top and just kind of draw on there and that just kind of lets you uh, That'll let you kind of draw out where your actual pad would be. And you'll note that this is in a group, so I don't need to worry about things uh, intersecting or anything like that. I can just kind of draw on top of it and kind of make whatever it is I want to make. And so this kind of got in the way right here, so I'm going to hide it for just a second. And then I'm going to go back in and just finish this out as kind of a rectangle. And so then I'm going to go back and I'm going to unhide my topography. So you can see how I've got this kind of into my hill right now. So I'm going to go ahead and move it up so that it's not touching my hill anymore. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this by doing a control X. I'm going to double click inside my group, my topography group, and then I'm going to do an edit paste in place. So all I did is I took that and I put it inside my group containing my site work geometry so that I can actually get in here and work with this. And the first thing we're going to do, and I'm actually going to shorten this hill just a little bit, um, just because I'm going to make this a little bit easier on us. So this would still work with a taller hill, but you'd have to do a little bit more work. So we're just going to shorten this up just a little bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the tool called the stamp tool. And so what you do to use the stamp tools, you click on this face, you click on the stamp tool, and then it's going to ask you what face you want to stamp that on. And you can see how, since I had this selected, it knows it's going to stamp this object. Um, but you can see how if I click on this, it's going to allow me to stamp something into my hill. And that's great, and that's very helpful. And you can see what that does is that gives us this kind of, um, that gives us this kind of sloped, earth so it basically takes this pad and then it'll slope the contours and so the first thing we're going to talk about is when you do this when you activate this object you click on the stamp tool and then you click on this face you see this red box this red box is indicating to you what the offset is going to be 
and so we're gonna set our offset to as small as possible so you can see how I tried to type in zero feet and it won't allow that it needs a little bit of an offset but this red line is indicating kinda of where the offset is gonna be where the where the um, earthwork actually slopes up and down so I set that to as little as possible specifically because I want to use this to create a wall and so I'm just gonna use this pad and I'm just gonna click right here on my face and you can see how what the stamp tool does is that allows me to create kind of a pad in here so what this is allowing me to do is this is allowing me to move this up and down until I kind of set where I want my pad to be. So I can move it down into the ground, but we don't really want to create that hole. Um, I'm trying to line up this lower left-hand corner as close as I can with where the actual earth is over here. And so the next thing I'm gonna do, and you can see how I clicked, and so now what I have is I have this kind of hill over here um, that we're gonna cover up with our retaining wall. And so the next thing I'm gonna do, because you'll notice that I'm still in my earthwork group, well what I wanna do is I wanna model my actual retaining wall itself outside the group. So first of all, I'm gonna double click on this, right click and hide it. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this face and I'm gonna do a copy, so a control C, I'm gonna double click outside of my group, so now this group, we're outside of this group and we're gonna do an edit, paste in place. And you can see what happens when I paste this in place is now I've got this face over here that I can work with. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of an offset. So in this case, I'm gonna do a, f I'm figuring this is gonna be a six inch retaining wall. And so I'm gonna do a six inch offset or a five inch offset to the inside. So I'm just gonna use the offset tool and offset that to the inside. And then I'm gonna go ahead, because we're working on this wall back here, I'm gonna close off this edge and I'm gonna close off this edge. So that now, if I click on this face, this face itself is its own kind of shaded face. Like this end over here isn't shaded. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push pull this up. And I'm gonna push pull it up until it covers the, the dirt on this entire wall over here. So you can see how I've got this wall in here and it's got a whole bunch of extra lines just from the grid from where this was, uh, where this was intersected. I'm gonna go ahead and erase out all these extra lines. And so now you can see what I have is I have this wall that goes along the back side over here. But generally speaking, you probably wouldn't build this wall quite this way, only because you basically waste a whole bunch of extra concrete. So a lot of the time what you do is you'd come in here and you'd step this wall. Um, and it, it's kind of up to you how many steps you set in here. You can see I'm going through and cleaning this up while I talk. But um, it's kind of up to you how many steps you set in this. But for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of use these grid lines as kind of guidelines. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and I'm just gonna split this face up and I'm just gonna step it down. And you can step it down as many times as you like. You could do it at every single contour if you wanted to. You could do it at every other. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do it at every other. But you can see how I'm just kind of push pulling this down so that my wall steps along with my topography. So you can see down here on this side, this wall would kind of go away at about this point. So what we can do is we can just push that down to our building pad. And probably what we'd end up doing, and we'll talk about this in a second, is we'd probably end up doing something very similar on this other side. But I'm going to go ahead and erase out this extra geometry that's in here. And then we'll do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to draw a guideline up on this face and across and then I'll bring this down. We'll do the same thing over here. And we'll bring this down. So you can see how this is actually pretty easy to do because this is actually outside of our actual topography group over here. And then what we would do, because if you remember there was a one inch offset, so there's a gap here, we would just take this entire face and we just push pull it one foot or one inch so that now this is six inches and there's no gap anymore so you can see how that gives us our retaining wall on the back side and then probably what we could do 
is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put, since we did the offset all the way along here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push pull this down. You can see how it's its own face over here. Um, I'm going to push pull this down and inference to kind of this lowest point. And if you know, there's a one inch gap over here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to hide our topography and we can just come in and delete out all this extra stuff. So go ahead and delete that. You can go ahead and reverse your faces while you have everything hidden. And then we'll go back and we'll do an edit, unhide, all. And so now what we have is we have our wall in here and I'm just gonna push pull that out one inch. You may end up push pulling it out two inches actually. So I'll just push it out an extra inch. So you can see how I was able to push pull that out and I'm gonna go back and, un and hide this again. And you can see how when I push pulled this down, I didn't do it in create new face mode, which is what I should have done. So there was a gap in here. So I'm just having to fill that gap in and then kind of erase out this extra. So in keeping this cleaned up is usually a pretty good idea. Um, so just deleting out all this extra stuff that's in your model just to give you kind of a clean pad that you can work from. So now if I go in here, I do an edit, unhide, all. Now I've got my topography in here and you can see how the one thing that's a little bit of an issue is because we also left this building pad over here. Um, in this group, you're getting kind of this weird overlap. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to erase that out inside my group. So that might be a little confusing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the topography or the, uh, the uh, pad that I've created, I'm gonna put that in a group and I'm gonna hide it. And you can see how this actually has kind of the leftover geometry still in here. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to use a right to left select and I'm actually gonna delete that all out because we don't really need it anymore. And we don't need it anymore because it's covered up by our retaining wall. So, and you might be able to like group all of this and hide it instead. That's probably a smarter way to do this just because I don't like deleting out topography that you may need later. But for the sake of just quickness here, I'm gonna go ahead and erase all of this out. I'll erase out this little bit of extra here. And then I'll go back outside my group and I'll do an edit, unhide, all. And there you go. Now you've got your nice flat pad that you can work from where you've got a retaining wall, retaining the dirt on this backside. And you may have to come in here and do some cleanup. So generally you will just because you're dealing with so much geometry in here. But there you go, that'll give you a nice clean pad to work with. And uh, you know, you could come in here with like the smooth tool or something like that if you wanted to and reduce your radius and kind of slope everything away from your building. So you could come in here and adjust your topography the way you want to later. But this is how you can create a pad with a retaining wall in a SketchUp model. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is this something that you found useful? Is there another way that you do this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.